today we'll be taking a look at the Mold Designer and its new Angular Slicing Mode. Our goal is to achieve something like this, um, a 3D printed structure for our production process. Now this tool, it automatically designs the box, adds ribs, stiffeners, extensions, stock, forklift holes and more, and then it will generate your toolpath to go and then print it. It allows you to move quickly when you need to make a mold and spend less time in CAD adjusting your designs. And now we have the angular slicing mode so you can generate molds with tricky overhangs as well. It's really easy and we're going to show you how to use it today. So let's get started. First I'm going to delete the current setup so I'll remove this operator and I'm going to import a new file and I've already loaded a few options to our project and the model will automatically be centered on the bed. Now let's look for our mold designer tool. So I'll go to the operator library and search for that. All right, so I've added my mold tool and I can now expand the slice settings and select the mode to angular. And this is how we're going to control the, the slicing angle. And I'm going to set that to 40 degrees. For the layer height, I'm going to go with three millimeters. And let's print it with two walls. And to minimize the number of jumps, I'm going to make the whole part continuous. Let's generate that and see how it looks. And so we can see in a matter of seconds, we've created a box, uh, the molds design with the imported surface in the middle and extensions either side. And uh, we can we can control the dimensions here. Um, let's, let's change the extensions length. Um, let's make them a little bit wider. And then I want to reduce the height as well. Um, I don't think I need to print the box that big. I think it's going to be too long to print. So I'm going to make that a little bit smaller and then regenerate. Yeah, great. Okay, and now now I can see how this looks, and I can I can take a look inside as well. We've got these two these two lines here for the bits of extrusion we've got, and I can see here the return path as well, making it continuous to allow us to avoid any unnecessary jumps. Let's go ahead and add some stiffeners. So we'll enable them first from the settings and I think we'll add three stiffeners and we can control here how they connect to the top and the bottom and this is going to control the shape of the stiffeners. So for the top we'll set to 20 millimeters and the bottom we'll set that to 100. This will give us a nice tapered uh, structure and let's generate it. And that's it. So we've got the, the new generated shape and we can see the stiffeners, the ribs inside there. And we've got two lines, uh, two types of lines here. We've got the orange and the blue um, to represent the walls and the stiffeners themselves. This is useful when we want to um, apply different process parameters or control the deposition differently for these different types of lines. And I can still keep it continuous um, if I'd like to do that. And additionally, I can add stock or add extra walls um, if I'm going to be milling this part later, I can make sure that there's extra walls there so I don't um, mill through the part itself. I'm going to add um, some more stock. I'm going to add some extra walls there um, just to the, where, the, where the outer surface is. I can regenerate that to see how that looks. Um, so you can see it's really quick to make a new design in no time at all and quickly see how the mold might look. And I'm going to have a look inside. Yeah, you can see the, the added walls there moving and going through the part. And there we go. You can see it's uh, I've now got a fully parametric workflow. I've got my commands and my tool in there, and I can replace the design, and everything will be automatically recomputed, keeping all of the settings intact. It's really important to note that the algorithm works best when using standard geometries, uh, like rectangular shapes. Um, if you're trying to use this tool with irregular shapes, it may, you may cause some issues with the, uh, the mold generation. 
So ideally your designs should fit within a rectangle. So for more information uh, about this, visit our Knowledge Center and underneath the resources page, you'll be able to find the Mold Designer Settings Guide, which offers a comprehensive explanation of every setting and, and how, to, how to get the mold that you're trying to achieve. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Talk to you soon. Thank you.